Well, joining us now to talk more about this is Linda Bald, Professor of Health and Policy at the University of Stirling, and she is one of the authors of that uh, report, and she joins me from uh, Edinburgh. Thank you for being with us. Now, it's uh, quite an interesting report in that uh, it is a position that uh, is at odds with, with uh, uh, public health, health officials in other countries, such as the United States. Just to ex explain to us, what do you base uh, this conclusion on, how you, how you arrived at this? Well, this is the most comprehensive review that's been done anywhere in the world to date on tobacco harm reduction and e-cigarettes. And harm reduction is about supporting adult smokers to stop who find it very difficult to quit. We still have 9 million smokers in the UK. Um, E-cigarettes, as you said, are illegal in almost 50 countries, but we've taken a very different approach. And what we've tried to do is separate the use of nicotine, which is a fairly benign product, from tobacco, which is deadly. So e-cigarettes deliver nicotine, but not many of the other harmful toxicants that are in tobacco. Uh what about, though, the concerns that have been expressed about e-cigarettes, that um, using them might uh, encourage young people to eventually start smoking traditional uh, cigarettes? Yeah, so we've been following this over the last few years, and there's good data from the USA, the UK, and other countries. What you see is that there's a high level of experimentation with electronic cigarettes amongst teenagers, but actually there's very low levels of regular use. And when you look at the children and teenagers who are using e-cigarettes regularly, almost all of them are already using tobacco. So it's an alternative to tobacco. Importantly, we also don't have any good quality studies yet that show us definitively that a teenager who starts using an electronic cigarette and who wouldn't otherwise have smoked then moves on to become a smoker. So this idea that e-cigarettes are a gateway to a new generation of smokers, we are just not seeing that in the data. We, of course, we have to do more research. But this, today's report is really about saying that some of the misconceptions are incorrect and we actually need to look at e-cigarettes as potentially quite promising for smoking cessation. Uh, and in terms of, of what impact uh, you, you're hoping this report is going to have, uh, do, you, do you think that this will uh, force other public health officials to, to take a second look at this? Yeah, we hope so. I mean, the Royal College of Physicians in 1962 produced a report called Smoking in Health, several years before an American report that set out all the effective tobacco control measures. So the RCP is really a body that tries to do, bring together the best quality evidence. We think that um, uh, the story so far on e-cigarettes has been often misleading. We need to separate the good science uh, from some of those myths, and we need to give the public accurate information. And what we're seeing today is that for smokers who struggle to stop, it's okay to use an electronic cigarette. And indeed, health professionals should feel that they can at least talk to their patients and the public about these devices confidently. We need more research, but it's looking promising. Good to speak with you. Linda Bold joining us there from Edinburgh. Thank you.